Welcome to the Bella Vista Gardening Program. I'm Jerry Horner, and with me today is J.B. Portillo, who is a fellow member of the Bella Vista Garden Club. She's president of the Benton County Master Gardeners. She's a Northwest Arkansas Master Naturalist, among 17,000 other things she does. <laughs> <coughs> and we're just so glad to have her today. Thank you for having me. Uh, today, is, is, uh, we're talking about um, the um, clematis, clematis however you pronounce it, um, using it as vine art in your garden. And we're, on a, we're going to talk about upcoming events, and we're going to talk about um, what to do in your garden in September. But first, I really want to share with our viewers some great news. Uh, the Bella Vista Garden Club program has been awarded the national overall winner from the National Garden Club Incorporated for a gardening TV show. So we are so proud yes. that we got this, and considering there's over 500 clubs in the country, and some of them are quite big. Um, so we got this little, this little Bella Vista, Arkansas station and club got this wonderful award. So um, I just have to thank everybody from, that's helped with the, uh, the show from the Bella Vista Garden Club, the Master Gardeners, and the TV, sh the TV program. People are just been wonderful volunteers they've all volunt all these volunteers have made this possible and so. we have to thank you because well, you've been doing this a long time yeah. and we appreciate you well i couldn't do it without the help of all these volunteers it's just been wonderful and we're just so glad to provide gardening information to, to all of our viewers so we're just very proud of that anyway the upcoming events the garden club plant sale the fall plant sale will be october 6th saturday from um eight to one at the parking lot at Allen's and just want to mark your calendar for that. And we're going to have hostas and trees and shrubs and perennials and iris. Um, I think we're going to have some bulbs. We might have some um, surprise lilies maybe. Good. Because they're hard to find. Yes. And uh, we're going to feature our Bella Vista daffodil again. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got them planted all over the city. We do. Yeah. You remember, our plan is to just yes. have everybody driving yes. into Bella Vista in the spring know that we're here. That's and that, right. And that is truly the name of that daffodil. And that's the name we of the daffodil. We didn't make it up. No, that was, I found that in the Beck and, one of the catalogs. Right. One of, Beck and, Breck and Becky or whatever. Anyway, um, we're going to have those, and we're also going to have our big mums, those big, huge mums that we had last year, and they sold out in about 15 or 20 minutes. Yes, so they did. Get there early and get your mums and your daffodils. So, But now we need to discuss um, clematis or clematis. You can pronounce it either way, either pronunciations in the dictionary. Depends on what you prefer. I think the East Coast is cl uh, clematis and England is clematis, and then we usually say clematis. Because we're in the South. We're in the South. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it just depends, you know. Either way is, is okay. But there's just, um, I was reading there's 250 varieties, and I'm sure there's over 500 or 1,000 by now because they're hybridizing so many new um, uh, varieties, varieties mm -hmm. because they're coming up with shorter and smaller and more compact. And uh, they're just developing, you know, thousands of them, it seems like. Anyway, the growing conditions you need for growing these is sun to part shade. They like sun, but they'll take a little shade. And there's an old wives' tale that you have to plant something underneath uh, at the roots to keep them shaded. And that's really an old wives' tale. It's just that they need moisture. They don't like to dry out. And I guess sometimes they thought that would keep the sun off of the roots and they'd, they'd stay, you know, more moist. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is to keep them moist. They like water and they like good drainage and they don't like clay. And they, they like a slightly alkaline soil, kind of neutral, but not acid soil. So. I hope they like rocks growing in well, my Well, sometimes they like good drainage. Yes, so there you go. They, there you go. That's <laughs> our rocks for the drainage. So. And the fertilizer, um, you want to fertilize them maybe, you know, when you plant them and put in a slow-release fertilizer when you, when you first plant them. And then really monitor them uh, the first year. We got most of our information um, and pictures that we're going to show from Susan Strong, who was a master gardener. And she was uh, in, the, in the Bella Vista Garden Club. And she has most beautiful clematis that I've ever seen. 
And she said, too, the first year is the critical year that you really want to monitor them, um, make sure they get their moisture. And uh, after the first year, if, they're, if they survive, they'll do really well. Mm -hmm. But you really have to kind of baby them the first year. So, <clears throat> And then there's three pruning groups. When you talk about clematis groups, mm -hmm. they always talk about what group it's in. It's a pruning group. And the older clematis are usually group one, and where you can, they grow on um, uh, old, old uh, growth, so that you can put the clematis in, let it get to the certain length or height that you want, and then every year just trim it at that height, and that's gonna that's group one. Mm -hmm. And you've seen those all over the oh, place. Oh yes, you know, if you mm -hmm. want a seven foot clematis, you cut it at seven foot every February. You, you trim, you prune in February. Gotcha. And you'll have a seven foot clematis. But the other two groups, um, they have um, a little different pruning. You still want to prune them in, um, in February, but you prune them above the, maybe the second or third um, little bud on the stems. That way you'll have flowers all the way up. If you prune them just at the top, sometimes those lower branches, mm -hmm. the buds don't develop well, so you have all this you know, growth, growth yes. at the bottom mm -hmm. with no flowers and then flowers at the top. So group two and three, they handle basically about the same. Um, so we're going to see some of the pictures um, from Susan. She has um, oh, there's one. a wonderful garden. She had um, over 64 in her, in her garden with 41 varieties. And this first one is called Abilene. It's on a decorative fence. And she has used... <coughs> A lot of different supports. You have to have support usually for your mm -hmm. clematis because they like to climb. And this one grows about four foot. So you can see that's just beautiful from the ground up. And that's one plant. One plant. One plant. Yeah, so it grows up and out. Up and out because as you <coughs> cut lower, you're having more branching. Mm -hmm. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great way to, to prune. The second one is called uh, Suzanne. And this is another decorative fence. <clears throat> she's, she's collected a lot of these little decorative fence sections. She goes to, you know, yard sales and whatever. And uh, it grows about three foot tall. And I think those are, um, they come out darker purple and they fade, fade to lavender, I think that's the one. It's got like, so you'll have two different colors on your, yes. on your plant. Yes. The next one is called um, Fuji Masumi. And it's really easy to grow, she said. It's, it's, easy. it's on a, um, a, she's got a huge fence around the garden. And she uses a lot of the vinyl coated wire fencing. And she just attaches it to the fence and it grows up there. And this one, she said, is easy to grow. And uh, the next one is Fleury. And she, this is on another decorative fence she's found. I think the fences are so pretty. Mm -hmm. They really add a lot of texture and interest. And it grows to about three to four feet. And you can see it's just blooming from the top to bottom. It's beautiful. Then the next one is actually Fleury also. And she's growing it in a galvanized tub with bamboo for support. Now, anybody can do that. Yes. That's really easy. Yes. You don't have to buy expensive supports or anything. Exactly. And it's just, it'll just be And you can move it around. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next one we have is Yuki Kamachi. And it's growing on the vinyl coated um, fencing. She's wrapped it around a bird post. She's got a lot of bird houses and bird posts. And it grows to eight to 10 foot tall. So that just gives a lot of interest to the bottom of your bird house. You got bird houses in mm -hmm. here? I do. Yeah, so this would be a great place to put your clematis. Also got a huge fence. Oh yeah, yeah. any of those fences. It's mm -hmm. really wonderful to cover those fences. And see with the fence, usually the, the unfinished one, the unfinished side is on the inside. Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of cover that up anyway. Mm -hmm. So Now this one is called Duchess of Albany. And it's on a bird hop post, and this is a, a group three. So, but she, like I said, she trims group two and three about the same. Then the next one is called Bourbon, and this is on an antique iron fence she's got, and that's a huge, huge bloom. Um, and the bloom, you can you can find them with smaller blooms, mm -hmm. like the fall sweet autumn clematis. Mm -hmm. It's very tiny blooms, but it can be kind of invasive. Yes, it can take over, um, but. But a lot of the, the flowers are just huge. 
Then the next one is called Guiding Promise, and she put that on a metal obelisk. I like that. You know, and you just get all these real unusual supports that mm -hmm. um, they just add a lot of interest. Yes. And that's, uh, it only grows to about three or four feet on that one. Um, and then the next one we have is called Niobe. And this is so interesting. She's got a piece of driftwood that she's attached to the fence with that. Um, she's wrapped it in chicken wire. So she shaped the chicken wire to the, uh, to the driftwood. And you can shape chicken wire just about to anything and make it really an unusual shape. So You know what said, I heard the other day? Is somebody, now we're supposed to say it's hen netting. Hen netting instead of chicken wire. Oh, I don't like are we it. getting politically correct with chicken wire? I guess. I don't know. That's ridiculous. I know. It's it's chicken wire. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that one's really easy to grow, but it's just so interesting to see that driftwood going up there. Um, and then the next one we have is the petite fal falcon. It's called. It's and she's got that growing in a copper pot, and it'll grow about three foot tall. So you can put them in pots mm -hmm. as long as it's large enough to support the, the root system. And you have to really water them more of course. if they're in a pot. Of course. Yeah. And then the next one is Ashva. And that's planted with a William Baffin rose. A lot of people intertwine them with their climbing roses. Mm -hmm. So you get color um, at a, maybe at a different time or the same time. So she's got that just intertwined with the rose. And it, it grows to five to ten foot tall. So you want to check your labels when you buy them. And you should always save your labels, too. Yes, yes. But check your labels when you buy them to see how tall they get. And um, if you don't want it that tall, maybe you should get a different variety. But So you have to check your labels. And then the next one is Haku Okan. And this one is, is actually spilling over the fence. It's planted in the back of the fence, mm -hmm. but it's spilling over her vegetable garden. Her vegetable garden's underneath there. And uh, that one grows 8 to 10 foot tall. So she's got it on the back side of the fence. It's, it's beautiful, too. Yes. But it's spilling over onto the front. So she's just done so many different things with her, her clematis. So. Then we have um, Baiju. Baiju. And that is trailing on the ground with no support. See, huh. that one only grows one to two foot tall. And I love the fact you could put them on the ground, almost like a ground cover. I love it with the And uh, then the chartreuse. The yeah. Yes, it's and gorgeous. With the uh, huchera in the back. So your com color combinations are wonderful. So I like them trailing on the ground like that if they're small. Mm -hmm. They're just so pretty. And then the pink champagne is next. And that one um, the, uh, is, uh, see how big those flowers are? Mm -hmm. They just add so much color to your garden. And even the faded blooms, you know, when they stop blooming, you have that like a little seed pod or something. They're yes. even cute, you know? Yes. They're pretty little things in there. You don't have to deadhead them. You know, they're just add to the texture. Okay. Then the next one we have is called, uh, it's still waters. Wester Plot and Duchess of Edinburgh. Those are three clematis. One's on the fence, one's on the the um, the bird house post, and then one's on the fence and the on the right side. So she's got three clematis there, all combined. You know, so you have an overview of of what that beautiful garden looked like. It's just full of clematis. So, and that's on the on the vinyl coated wire. And she, she uses a lot of that. She really likes that. It's easy to put on the fence and easy to trail the clematis through it. So, And the next one we have is the Duchess of Edinburgh close-up. That's what the flowers look like. And see, that's a double or triple or whatever they call yes. that. There's, there's more than just the single petal. Um, so then some of them are bell-shaped and some of them can be little like stars. I mean, there's just different types of blooms. You have to just look at the nurseries and see um, um, which, which um, type you want. And she had some nursery uh, suggestions. And um, we're going to put this on our website, all okay. this information, because yes. yes. there's no way you'll remember all these names. 
but um, I'll put this on the on the BellaVistaGardenClub.com website. And she had a couple um, nurseries that she suggested. Sometimes she would order mail order some of these, and you just get a little sprig, mm -hmm. and then they're, they're hard to grow. Right. But the one, one she orders from, they they come in a nice pot, and they're pretty much established. So, or you can get them locally. Some of the nurseries carry them. They do. And you just have to watch and look for them. That's right. So have you found any in any of the nurseries you've gone to? I am a, a big White River uh, oh, fan like White with River. natural. With the native with plants. With natives, yeah. Because yeah. most of these are going to come from, um, well, they come from Africa. They come from a lot of different mm -hmm. places. The, mm -hmm. And Japan has a lot of um, clematis, too. So, but they've been hybridized all over the all over the world. They're exactly. beautiful, but it sure does add a lot of color to your garden, you know. And uh, different seasons, you can see when they bloom early or late. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to have to add them to our gardens. I tell you, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, I love it. I love them. So, um, the other thing we have to talk about is. Um, what to do in your garden in September. Mm -hmm. So in September, it's kind of gone, we're kind of like at the end of the season, but you still have another month or two of blooms for things. Your annuals and your herbs are still probably doing well, because mm -hmm. we've had some rain, and I think we're having more rain. I think so. But it depends on September, what happens in September. But if you've deadheaded your annuals and you've um, fertilized, you know, they still should be in pretty good shape. And you can you take your herbs and dry them uh, for the winter after you. Yeah, and then for your perennials, mm -hmm. um, deadheading those on, uh, your mm -hmm. blooms on the mm -hmm. perennials are good, and divide those that are overcrowded. Right, that's a good time for that. It's also a good time of the year to plant some perennials. The mm -hmm. fall is a good oh, time yeah. to plant. Peonies have, especially. Hey, right, they have time to get their roots established mm -hmm. and grow a little bit, mm -hmm. and uh, watch for water needs, mm -hmm. that's always important. Hostas and daylilies can be divided in the spring or the fall. Mm -hmm. Uh, but doing it in the fall ensures they get established better. Yeah, their roots yeah. are just going to get in there and yeah. be established. And the roses, I haven't seen hardly any Japanese beetles this year. I know. Other people say they have, but I have been very fortunate. Me too. I haven't seen hardly any. Mm -hmm. um, but you just want to keep deadheading your roses and checking for the black spot or, you know. But stop your fertilizing. You don't want to fertilize after early September because the new growth would be could be damaged by the, exactly. by the frost. So. But this is, um, they should have pretty good blooms in September, so. Well, and then your lawns uh, need a deep watering at mm -hmm. least one inch weekly. Right. And late September's a good time to overseed the fescue right. lawns, we for sure. Right, we do that, we overseed. Um, and freezing seeds for a few days before applying uh, helps germination. Yeah, that was a tip I got from a lawn service. They uh -huh. say they freeze their, um, put their seed in the freezer for a week or two before they put it out, and it kind of helps germinate. I don't know how, but it does. You can also do your pre-emergence. Yeah, right, for weeds. Oh, right. did we have weeds this year? Oh, those mulberry weeds? Oh. I, I'm going to, oh. They're driving me crazy. Me too. I just They're hate awful. Them. I just hate them. And you can't get rid of them. You have to pull them up. You have to pull and and watch you those do, seeds. You do not put them in your compost bin. Oh, no, no. Uh, you, you just burn them or put them in a bag put them and in the trash. them in the trash. Yeah, because yes. those seeds are just awful. Just They could just go everywhere. So your trees and shrubs, um, of course, you have to monitor, monitor them for water. This is a great time to plant uh, seeds and um, trees and shrubs It's a, in the fall. That gets them established for the winter. So um, that's when their energy is going to the roots is in the winter. So you, this is a good time to plant them. But monitor the water, you know, make sure they get mm -hmm. enough moisture. Mm -hmm. And then vegetables. I don't grow vegetables. Oh, I do. I yeah. um, This year has not been the best year for, mm -hmm. for certain things for me, but I've yeah. had okra like crazy. Oh. I'm harvesting that now, and uh, my my dog likes to hunt cucumbers with me. Oh, hunt my them? My dog, <laughs> he, he does. He goes and he picks one and eats it while I gather oh, the big my. ones. I don't know where that came from. I don't know. I haven't heard but, that. <laughs> But I've got a lot of that and, you know, t tomatoes. Um, but right now, you can also start planting some fall vegetables. Right. You can do your kales and your spinaches and your peas and things. And lettuce. That, yes, that's right. That's what I you should got, grow is lettuce and spinach. Exactly. we eat a lot of that. There you go. I should. So it, it's a good time. It, also, mm -hmm. it's kind of time to start 
cleaning up and mm -hmm. preparing for next year. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so, you, and you have to rotate your crops too. So. You do. Um, and be careful, uh, even with your tomato plants, if you've had problems with the tomato vines at all or any sort of disease, do mm -hmm. not put them in your compost bin. Right. Burn them or yeah, get, rid get rid of them, them as well. Yeah. yeah. So, And this is really a good time to get rid of um, any invasive plants you have, like poison ivy and so forth, and honeysuckle, because as you treat them now, their their um, energy is going to the roots anyway, so the, the herbicide will go into the roots. and. Um, I usually use that 20%, it was a 20 or 40% um, vinegar. Vinegar. Mm -hmm. Really helps. You mm -hmm. just have to be careful not to put too much vinegar in your beds, but uh, it does um, it does kill the weeds and kill things um, without damaging your soil and going into the groundwater. Right. So. so if you have any other questions about gardening in September, remember there's a lot of information on the Bella Vista Garden Club website and uh, also on the Benton County. Uh, BentonCountyGardening.org has just tons of information. So you can just, you know, if it's too hot to work outside or too rainy, mm -hmm. just go on the computer. The and best time to pull weeds is in the rain. You know that, right? Oh, right after it rains. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I always pray for a big rain so I can get those mulberry weeds out. <laughs> oh, they're terrible. Could so. we take a minute and, oh, and yeah. talk about our flowers? Sure. Okay. Uh, the flowers uh, on all of our TV shows that we record here in the studio, Just Petaling provides uh, plants for us or an arrangement for us. And this one, this particular one, is another beauty. Oh, it's beautiful. Rhonda just fall. does incredible work. She She's, does. Every time we, we have a show, she walks in with these amazing plants. And they're wonderful. And what we're going to do today is, as we always do, we're going to take these to one of our other businesses or people or somewhere and in sometimes Bella Vista. Sometimes they go to a nonprofit or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, and tell them thank you. Mm -hmm. Because it helps Rhonda. It right. helps... And Beautiful. she's a member of the Bella Vista Garden Club now. Yeah. Yes. Oh, good yes. deal. Yes. Good deal. So she's anyway, thank you, Rhonda. Yeah, we love you. you. Okay. And then um, um, the other um, the other information we wanted to give you is the um, Bella Vista Garden Club website. Be sure to go on there and see the other um, TV shows. The, all of the TV shows are on there. Um, if you go to the home page, it says BVGC on TV, and it lists every show. We started filming in March of, well, I started hosting in March of 2010. So we have a lot of shows out there with a lot of information and a lot of subjects. So if you go to a certain year and you can, um, you can just click on that month. It t there's a summary of what's going on on that show, and you click on that month, and it will uh, take you right to the YouTube page, and you can see the um, the show. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of information on that website. Absolutely. So it's just full. And along with the Master Gardeners, I also want to mention you're going to be president again next year. Is yes, that correct? I think so. Oh, that's wonderful. You're such a good president. <laughs> Thank you. You're a good cheerleader and get us all going. we got a lot of wonderful projects. We do. At the, and it's our, it'll be our 25th anniversary. At the 25th mm -hmm. anniversary. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to talk about. What, we've got big plans coming up with a lot of and different... And you're going to help with it. I am. I'm going to help. <laughs> I have to help. It's 25 yeah. years. I haven't been in 25 years, but it's close. Yeah. Maybe 20. So. Okay. Um, but you have to watch the papers. We're going to put some things in the papers, and we're going to um, advertise more things about what's going on with the Master Gardeners. Absolutely. They do so many projects. We do. And you do rain gardens? Everything. We've done rain gardens. Our big one, of course, is the one we've featured on this show before. Right. Uh, the pantry garden oh, at the Helping, Helping Hands. hands. Right. Oh, that is one. And we have gotten... How much produce so, so far did they say? 2,832 2, pounds, pounds as of the 1st of September. Oh, my gosh. That, that we've is... given back to the community. Yeah, so everything that is that comes out of that garden mm -hmm. goes to Helping Hands. It does. So the Master Gardeners all work it, mm -hmm. but they don't even take home a tomato. Nope. They don't take anything with them. They just, just take give home everything pride. to the man. Yeah. 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 It's just a wonderful, wonderful garden, and it's getting bigger. They keep adding beds every every year, so um, 
what what is oh then the other project they did at the um the sheriff's house? department Oh, the sheriff's the department. The sheriff's department. We also work with the inmate, the female inmates there right. and do the garden. And then, yes, anybody that um, gets a chance to drive by the Benton County Courthouse. Yeah, we that do a lot was, of that planting. Uh, Beautiful. Best Strickland uh, and I helped us with if, that. And I think if we watch for the year here, um, we'll be having a program at the uh, Bella Vista Garden Club. That meeting is going to be uh, September. We're going to do our, our uh, scholarships. That'll be September 26th at 11 o'clock at the um, uh, Bella Vista Communi um, Community Church. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to give out our scholarships. But sometime this coming year, we're going to have um, Phyllis Steyer do the um, program on the Sheriff's Garden. So yes. she'll tell us all about that. So right. kind of watch for that coming up. So that's going to be a wonderful, wonderful program. And she did give a program for Master Gardeners on mm -hmm. it and kind of explain what happens there. And they've got greenhouses. They do. It's the only jail in the country with greenhouses. It's amazing what they've done there. And I think the recidiv recidiv what do they call it? Recidivism? Where they come back if they... Is it like zero? Oh, if they've gone right, through the program, right, right. they don't come giving back. them a skill set. Right, Gives because them. these are not these are minimum security mm -hmm. people anyway. Right. They just made a mistake. Yeah. It's not like they're hardened criminals. Right, but we give them a skill set. Yeah, and they just they don't come back to jail. They mm -hmm. just find some wonderful thing to do and help, and they learn. That's right. They learn. That's right. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the show, and. Um, We'll tune in again next month, and I want to thank you again for coming sure. and sharing all your information. You're always fun to work with. Thank you, Jerry. You're so welcome. are you. Okay. And don't forget um, if to tune in next month, and until then, don't forget to stop and smell the roses. Or the clematis. Or the clematis. <laughs>